good afternoon our dear viewer welcome to the women at the front line program which airs here on civic space tv every saturday 2 to 3 pm i'm very delighted to be hosting you this afternoon and thank you for giving us your time this is a program in which we are showcasing women's contribution their impact in terms of their leadership wherever they are in uganda in the east african region but also in the great lakes region so we are happy to be seeing you and having your company this afternoon in this space as well we are encouraging women to step out step out in terms of coming out to offer their leadership wherever they are and also encouraging them to spread out affirmative action has been around for a very long time women quarters across the region are not doing us very well we want to encourage each other to step out into the mainstream and spread out into the mainstream and when we get to the spaces we want to impact on them dominate those spaces occupy hold ground <laughs> ladies <laughs> that is what this show is all about and i'm delighted to be hosting you in this space because i know you are in some spaces you are holding ground <laughs> you are impacting yes. you are causing change mm. and transformation in line with issues of social justice mm. and uh, i'd like to welcome our viewer follow us share our, our stories inspire someone out there but also join the discussion in our media social media handles on twitter on youtube and other spaces where you have joined us from so this afternoon we are going to be having a conversation around labor rights yes. and to join us in that discussion there is a whole big conversation around labor rights labor migration ladies issues of unpaid care yes. not in uganda alone but in the countries around us and this is a conversation that we want actually to pick up in terms of the public engagement so that then as the women's movement in uganda and across we pay attention to the issues of labor migration labor integration in the region and also the rights that are attendant to that and i'm very delighted to be hosting you uh, Lydia, <laughs> Lydia Buite mm. is from Platform for Labor Action and she's a senior person there managing the programs of that organization also as a deputy ED and I'll be bringing you different executive directors, women leaders in civic space holding ground mm. and when we begin rolling out that series we will have a lot of them coming here to share their stories, how they're impacting in the spaces they are in and particularly with Lydia and the institution that she's representing it is about labor rights so yes. they are labor activists yes. <laughs> and they're holding ground there are quite a few organizations uh, Lydia you're going to tell us more about that working mm. around this area yes. but we are seeing your work so I would like um, to welcome Lydia on the program but also joined in the program is Trisha Nabaye this one is a champion I could call her <laughs> <laughs> our village champion in our circles of the women's movement. Mm. You've been everywhere. I'm trying. You are <laughs> in the discussions concerning women in this country. And I'm so delighted because this is the team that we want to come on board. Yes. Atusha is a young leader. She's coming from GLIS, uh, uh, Greater Lakes Institute of Strategic Studies. She'll be telling us more around that uh, institute as well, what it does and the different things that we are doing because if we don't talk about these things ladies no one is going to know about yeah. them yeah. and women are working women are leading women are impacting the world they are doing so much yeah. and yet we don't know what is happening to the mm. extent that we are being challenged and our output is being challenged actually we are getting a reversal in terms of our contribution people are asking whether Affirmative action in various sectors is relevant in the education sector, in the health yeah. and in other spaces, in mm. parliament. Mm. So we need to engage with the public yeah. to understand why we need women everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you Thank so much you. for honoring Thank my you. invite. Mm. And I would like to start with you, Lydia, maybe just to tell our viewers what Platform for Labor Action is, your leadership journey. Where are you at? <laughs> I know you're a middle-level manager right now, yes. but uh, many people may not know who Lydia is, mm. where you are. What are your ambitions wow. 10 years from now? <laughs> or five <laughs> years? I hope to see you still leading in some spaces. Yeah. True. Yes, Lydia. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Monica. Yes. Thank you so much for, for inviting us as, 
as young leaders yes. to be able to to share absolutely our journeys you know i grew up seeing you know older women sharing their stories so this, their stories yes. so for you to invite us the young ones mm -hmm. oh it's it's a very good platform for yes. us also yes. to be able to share but there is a rider there on that one <laughs> yes because i was having a conversation with someone the other day and uh, she was saying that you see we are still hearing the voices of uh, matembe the voices of winnie bianima the voices of uh, Tezira Jamwa, uh -huh. the group that was in that category seems to be still speaking. In other words, they are challenging us and saying we are not doing much. We are not even visible. We are not seen. What's happening, yeah. young ladies? <laughs> yes, and that's why uh, for me, when you invited me, I was mm -hmm. like, oh, wow, that is very good because mm -hmm. we always see those ones that you've, uh, you've mentioned yeah. and more others, mm. uh, you know, sharing their journey. Yes. But uh, this platform, also giving us this particular platform as young people, as yeah. young leaders, yeah. to share our journey, mm -hmm. maybe the challenges, mm. but also how we have managed to mm. cope. Mm. I think it's a very good platform. Very and, good indeed. Uh, to our viewers, um, once again, my name is Lydia Buita. I work with Platform for Labor Action. Mm. And Platform for Labor Action, we, it's a non-government organization mm. that advocates for the rights of vulnerable and marginalized workers Absolutely. in Uganda. Mm. So labor and employment is the bread and butter mm -hmm. of of the work everyone. that we do like yes. everyone at the organization the, the entire sector the organization looked at the entire sector wow the entire sector of labor and employment so that is our bread and butter issues to do with social protection the legal and policy framework Frameworks. all that we have a hand and a foot and <laughs> Yeah, you seem to have been alone <laughs> in that sector, First, but also yeah. you've worked quite a long time yes, as an organization. Uh, for some time, um, you know, social justice is like you mentioned. Mm. Sometimes they are they are not an area where people want to sort of like um, venture in, and we are we are glad that at this of now we see many people coming on board. Mm. You know, to work on to work on social justice mm. issues. Mm. Eh? Mm. So uh, labor and employment is one of those, yes. and uh, we have seen even other institutions coming on board now. To be able to join this particular sector mm. so yeah I, that's what we are doing in brief as about the organization now about me, lydia the now, leader yes <laughs> 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 yes now for me as lydia the leader my journey has been a long one and i think i've also been a very patient uh person and i think to our viewers there young people it's very important to be patient because sometimes as young people we want, we want quick it fixes. there and there yeah. but yeah. I think you have to take deliberate steps, mm -hmm. you see. Mm. But of course, also having a very strategic um, mm -hmm. approach to where you want to be. So we're back in 2011 mm. as a young uh, graduate from uh, law school. Mm -hmm. You know, I have all, this all those energy. dreams you want to see. And you know, you've been in class and they're telling you whenever mm. a lawyer you know, speaks, mm. they should be earning money. Yes. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, that for me, that wasn't the actual thing. I wanted to make a difference. So I was like, how can I make a difference? I joined, there was a lecturer who was teaching us labor law at, uh, labor at that time. So he says, oh, there's this institution, whoever wants to, to join volunteer. Or volunteer or do yeah, internship. Yeah, I said, volunteer. For yes. me, a volunteer. Mm. I said, oh, okay, how can I volunteer? Ah. So I went and volunteered. But I think just God was just, I want to say God, because yeah. I think it was just uh, shaping, shaping, your destiny. shaping me, because mm -hmm. I also asked God and say, as I'm going to do law, and I become an advocate, I want to make a change, mm -hmm. you know, contribute to making a change in, mm -hmm. in the society around yeah. me. So I go and I volunteer. I volunteered, I think, for two months. Wow. And at that time, the person who was in the legal department was going for further studies. Mm -hmm. So they said, oh, so now we have a vacancy. So I'm like, hey. <laughs> and here is the lawyer. <laughs> Opportunities. Yeah. Opportunities yes, just come taking like that. Taking up opportunities that The come. young people out there, if actually you can, if you can volunteer, yeah. you finish school and there's an opportunity for you to volunteer in an area where you are very passionate, passionate about, about, please do. Yes. You know, just, just go. Mm -hmm. The other uh, opportunities are going to find you on that particular mm -hmm. journey. Mm -hmm. So, because mm -hmm. we see so many young people, of course, saying they are, there's no employment and everything. Yeah. But I tell you, there is no way an organization mm -hmm. is going to leave a person who is volunteering with them and when there is an opportunity outside. and yeah. get someone from outside. That's a very good So, point. it's very, very important yeah. that as young people, we just we just embrace that uh, act of volunteering. There is always a, yeah. a, a journey, a, a somewhere journey. to start. From. So, I started from that journey of volunteering. Mm -hmm. So, from volunteering, I think they made me a legal, uh, a legal associate, I think. 
Uh, so oh, I become a legal associate. At that time, I was manning the department alone. But they were also just growing, I yes. think, as an institution. Mm. And then later on, they brought in um, uh, other uh, legal officers and all that. So I went from being a legal associate to a legal assistant to legal officer, mm -hmm. from legal senior, senior wow. legal officer. And so when I was at that level, there was this opening in the in the institution. Because while I was doing that, I went through vigorous, you know, training. Uh, training. I was being exposed. To so much. I think that's one of the best, I think, being exposed and hands-on training within the institution is what I, have, I can say I have taken away from the institution. And you are the expert yeah, now. So, <laughs> because, <laughs> on labor rights yeah, and so labor I, laws. I, I, I went through, you know, writing development proposals. How do you speak to, to issues? Mm. Uh, from being, uh, you know, lawyers, we are normally behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. Now to go into radio Public talk space. shows, uh, TV talk shows. Mm. And I said, well, the first time you, 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 you appear and everyone is saying, oh, she was timid. And next time you go and say, oh, she did well. She did well. So, then another, she's you know, now an oh. expert. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So at that point in time, there was this opening and the organizational organogram, mm -hmm. the head uh, program mm -hmm. is like the deputy executive director. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's mm -hmm. why when you, some people, when they, they see my email, some of them address me as deputy ED or as the head program wow. or as director. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. oh, so I was like, I'm going to apply for this, <laughs> for this year. But of course, along the way, I also kept on adding value to myself. Yeah. Okay. You know, you need to add important. value to, your, to yes. yourself as yeah. a young person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that as you, you, you're gaining experience mm -hmm. as you work, uh, but you're also adding, you know, academic, academic value, value and, and experience, of course. So I applied for that, for that job I, and I got it. Mm -hmm. And then I got it. So that journey, I've, I've moved it since to a 2018. And it has been a very interesting journey. You and know, you, when people, you, you've been with people and moving with people, like let's say we, are, we entered at the same time like mm, this, mm, and mm. then I just go a bit in front mm -hmm. of but you, you're still but with, uh, the, same with team. the same team. Wow. Yeah, it is very, very good. So because, you must be really having a rich leadership journey, and yeah, a rich it's, leadership it's, experience. True, true. Yeah. And you know, the experiences that comes with every position that you are in. Mm. Because also what the organization did for me, and what I like about them is that they, you don't just go through. No. Mm -hmm. you, from now, those levels I talked about are very important. You also supervise certain people uh -huh. at that level. Mm. So you keep on learning this leadership journey. Mm. You work with it. Yes. If you're able, you've been supervising too. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. you're supervising the entire team. You know, this discussion yeah. is very interesting, yeah. uh, ladies, because mm. we want to showcase women leaders in civil space. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for the first programs, we had uh, a number of politicians. Yeah. 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 And now we say, no, let's showcase the work outside parliament. Mm -hmm. Outside politics, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it's it's a series of programs that have lined up showcasing different women leaders yeah. mm -hmm. and their leadership journeys. True. I'm sure uh, you're going to tell us some of the challenges that you have faced along the way. Mm -hmm. But before we go there, I just want to the audience to know who this young lady, Trisha <laughs> Navaye, is. Some know <laughs> in sp civic space TV uh, spaces, we are the you know, common faces here and mm. there, but maybe there's someone else who is watching for the first time today. Sure. Yeah, yes. there's always a first time. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Trisha Gloria Navaye. Mm. I'm a resident research associate at the Great Lakes Institute and there at Gliss I support the cyber policy mm -hmm. and digital rights program. Mm. But she said something that I am doing. Mm. I am building on myself. Absolutely. So within Gliss, affiliated to the different things I do. I'm also an ITP fellow, mm -hmm. media what training is that? fellow. Yeah. yeah, it's an international training program, program. in media training. Ah, mm -hmm. just hold it there because <laughs> media issues, ladies and gentlemen, we are having a battle. We are having a battle yes. around media mm -hmm. and yeah. the women. True. And I think you're going to have a take on that particular <laughs> issue because mm -hmm. There is a discussion going on right now that women are not agreeable to going to media houses. The media houses, we are talking about going everywhere, women occupying spaces everywhere and utilizing the media to mm. engage. But mm. we are having a challenge getting women to, women go, to, those to go to those spaces. You will address your mind to that <laughs> later, but let's get to know what that whole resident <laughs> yeah. researcher, yeah. that's a big thing. Uh, as a res <laughs> resident researcher. You know, I'm used, I'm used to resident uh, UN. Associate. Uh, so oh. I was like, oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, at Glyph we have yes. research fellows and yes. research associates, yes. resident research okay. and senior research wow. associates. Yes. Mm. I'm a resident research associate attached to cyber policy and mm. digital rights, mm. meaning that is where a lot of my niche and work is mm. in, in building the cyber policy and digital rights program. Wow. And I also support different other things that will be democracy and rule of law. Mm. So you'll find me in issues to do with politics and the law. But my niche at Glyph is in cyber policy and wow. digital rights. Wow. Yeah. And there's a lot of talk around cyber policy issues, cyber rights. Yeah, and as women, women, of course, I can't stop saying sexual harassment is growing in the cyber Even on spaces. The online spaces. Yes. Mm. So we are in the advent of the, fo of the fourth re industrial revolution. Mm. So yeah. a lot of us are now becoming digitally aware, aware. of what we need to be doing yes. and how to use these spaces. So those are the conversations and narratives I'm trying to build around the politics around digital spaces, cyber spaces, and how we can leverage them to cause change mm -hmm. as women, mm -hmm. to build mm -hmm. the movement as well. Mm -hmm. But then also to you know be aware, to be digitally aware of what is and what is not, mm. so we can safeguard ourselves even in those spaces. You know, I was one of those people who did not really enjoy using social media handles yeah. a lot, but I have been pushed <laughs> to get there because mm. I'm being left behind. Yeah. Why, why is it important for all women to really go to these media spaces and occupy the mainstream media, but also the social Mm. media spaces. I think the, the, um, and that's, that's the politics around organizing is changing. Mm -hmm. is that you'll find people are now creating online spaces mm -hmm. where they can, you know, push for mm -hmm. change, mm -hmm. organize mm -hmm. better, mm -hmm. and, and you push for narratives that work for those for mm. different women and different spaces mm. and so to stick to how we've been organizing is to cut off a whole generation mm. that, that that is moving with us mm. so while mass media there was a time the newspaper was king yes uh -huh. yeah, true. now online paper exactly. you have to turn your, your hard copy into an online, an version, online version as well mm. so it's a move it's an advent but it is one we are alive to and to, to go with it is much better than to be left behind. Mm -hmm. And that speaks for school as well. Mm -hmm. And the pandemic pushed us further Rather. into the digital mm -hmm. spaces. Yes. That speaks to work. That speaks to, I mean, people sit at home and attend meetings mm -hmm. in office and finish their proposals Everything. online. Everything online. Yes. <laughs> also, also, conferences we would rather have. 20 people in a space and more online. Yes. And you actually realize that they are now convening more people online wow. than even in actual spaces where we used to say, oh, well, we have to do transport refund. No, mm. I'll send you airtime, sit somewhere quiet and listen to this meeting mm. as it happens. Mm. Today, the Angel Forum is launching its strategic plan, but it's online. Mm -hmm. So it's better to go with it yeah. than so to be left behind. Challenge so. the women who are watching that we are not here wasting time. We are <laughs> creating change. Yes, yeah. especially because yes. this conversation is coming to you on your YouTube channel. Yes. So you <laughs> click, like, subscribe, share, and have a conversation around it. Around it. Yes. And it is leading to social change, women's yeah. transformation and empowerment. All the discussion is online now. Yeah. And in, with this particular one, we are saying we must showcase our leadership. We must yeah. tell the world what are we doing True. Yeah. and what do we need to do more mm -hmm. in terms of uh, our leadership. And mm -hmm. so for now, we want to see what women leaders are doing yeah. in civic spaces. Right. And uh, we are here with uh, Lydia from Platform for Labor Action. And we are doing a discussion or having a conversation around labor rights yeah. in Uganda. Thank Before you. you go to that, mm -hmm. what are some of the challenges you see in, in our leadership journeys, your personal journey, what is it teaching you? Oh, good. Mm. So my personal uh, journey is um, when you're leading, especially when a woman is leading a group of men, mm -hmm. because uh, I lead both men and women, women mm -hmm. and these are highly intellectual people. Absolutely. You know. Laws in the head, <laughs> <laughs> legal frameworks. I don't know what. <laughs> yeah, like legal framework. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Patriotism is still a reality mm, in this yeah. country. Mm. It's, it's a reality. It is. Well, at whatever level you are, I used to think, you know, I think when you're at a certain level, mm -hmm. people understand. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, all of you have gone to school. Yes. So they should be able to appreciate. Probably same classes. Yeah, it? they should be able to appreciate mm. uh, that, you know, this is, she's the leader at that point yeah. in time. But you see, that's, the patriotism is a, is a very big it's issue. still alive. It's still alive. Mm. Alive, mm. like alive. Mm. Mm. I would mm. give you a, an example where you even laugh. I'm like, what? So there was this one time we were in the field with um, our driver. And I'm one person who gives everyone their rights and respect 
no matter even if it's a cleaner because yes. without them i think something that, is missing yeah something yeah. will be missing mm. Mm. so i just want to show you patrizim exactly so we're in the field and uh, we had gone for a talk show it had ended late and we we're talking we we're taking back this young lawyer to their home i was in the field with the, with her and then the person reaches in the middle and says he's not driving down there so i ask okay Why? so how about so are we getting out to escort her up to home say no i say so you do you expect this person to walk um to walk alone back at that place because mm. there was a bit of darkness there were banana plantation uh, and he says i i don't know but i'm just not driving i'm like okay you're not driving why so okay uh what if the car gets a problem i said how about the human being that you're sending down there so i reflected at that point in time i'm like okay would this person have told a fellow man the that same thing, same thing mm. you know mm-hmm. if if it was the man sitting in this particular car i'm very sure he wouldn't i'm very very sure very, that he very would sure not. he wouldn't he wouldn't yeah so managing the, you know those uh, dynamics of society is important mm. um of course also um, managing young people i'm young but also managing young people mm. you know one of i want to speak to the young people mm. out there mm. the need to work to learn to work in the uh, structures in whatever form it is mm-hmm. you know young people we know we, because of uh the technology you know she uh she's talking about this is talking about so many things happening around we are very dynamic quick, very quick, very dynamic multitasking and here and good, there mm. but we have to learn to work within a structure mm. so mm. sometimes managing them you be like oh my goodness this this structure and it's showing you and i'm one person who is open to very brilliant ideas mm-hmm. because i believe that young people come with a lot a of lot. innovation absolutely yeah but how about us learning to say i can add on to what is exist and i make it better mm. as opposed to say i don't work in a structure mm. so that is also another challenge attitude to work attitude that one is a big challenge attitude i think attitude towards work mm. oh mm. my goodness mm-hmm. it's a very big challenge i'm one person like when you give me a task I'll ensure that you I delivered it and I have delivered to the dot. I like when I was a young girl I I, I when mom like she could tell us mopping the house eh? mm-hmm. so I would mop and after mopping I would love to look at the house how it's glittering and just see how clean it is <laughs> and it would give me a lot of satisfaction <laughs> and that 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 look that I used to give I give it to my work wow and I say how is my is document looking, looking like yeah. mm-hmm. because i always tell young people that i supervise and i work with that you see in your absence monica that is, paper mm-hmm. is a representation of who you are oh, oh. you will not be there to say you see i i i, I meant to say this mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. when i'm reading i'm like oh look at this mm-hmm. you know, no no mm-hmm. energy put mm-hmm. no you know you know those things mm-hmm. so i like to look at that work i'm like wow this is what so i always challenge my my people that i work with and say when you look at this work or this document or that deliverable yeah. is it a is wow it a moment w- for ah, you yeah. you know wow moment yeah is yeah. a wow moment for you because yeah, yeah. for me that look i used to give that house after mopping it goes also into my work wow. so some people i'm like oh lydia is lydia is workaholic uh-huh. she, she she's a perfectionist i'm like i'm not a perfectionist actually you can for long as i can read that document and it's very clear I'm like let it let it go out. Mm-hmm. I am very com- comfortable my other managers to give me a document and I just peruse and I'm like you're good to go. Mm. Very comfortable mm-hmm. because it is I perfect. know you have put it's in a a wow document. It's a wow document. Mm. So, so those are some of like you know how do you dealing with such uh, instances yeah. to be able to uh you know not leave anyone behind ah, at the end of the day it's intentional mentoring actually yeah, you're doing formal and informal <laughs> yeah. mentoring of young people yes, coming yeah. after you yeah mm. because i mean we are not permanent yes <laughs> mm. you're growing leaders yeah you you grow leaders you need and i always tell people in your position before you leave ask yourself who is going to take on this mantle mm-hmm. because don't be there and say without lydia the things cannot move mm-hmm. then you are not a good leader yeah. and that you is one of the yeah. the lydia one of the the traits we are saying the the leadership traits that women bring on board mm. you see there is this uh, the patriarchal type of leadership has been rotating around individuals yeah. building you know an identity successes built around one person mm-hmm. and that inability to train 
other people that grow with you in the leadership. Yeah. And uh, we are saying as women, we, we need to lead differently. Yeah. That's True. what you're trying to raise. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, um, Gloria, in your spaces where you work and also what you are seeing in the women's movement, yeah. are we living to that? in terms of deliberate training or what more do let we need me, to see? Let me see? speak for myself because yeah. I think in these spaces we've had a lot of, in the past few weeks or mm. months, we've been talking about mentorship, mm -hmm. especially how we mentor then the people that are coming into these spaces, mm. yeah. hold their hand and lead them. Mm. But let me speak for myself as a person. I am one that is very deliberate and mm -hmm. intentional. Mm -hmm. I seek out people I need to learn from. Uh -huh. wow. And I don't know if people have that, but... I've been intentional to even the women that I want to be associated with, with. because they speak to my mind. Uh -huh. So it is something as even the young children, the, the, the young ladies that I mentor or that are learning with me, mm -hmm. it is deliberate for me that even in the conversations we have, mm. you need to have a takeaway. Uh -huh. so have something to learn. Even what if it's, a, learn? it's an informal conversation, wow. what did you pick? Uh -huh. What did you take? Uh -huh. I need you to learn to do this. Wow. If, when you're introducing yourself, do this. So for me, when it comes to mentorship, I've been deliberate. Wow. I have for to, yourself, for myself. Fast. So if I am going to have to de develop as a lady or as a woman in these spaces, mm -hmm. I need someone to hold my hand. Mm -hmm. Who do I want to hold my hand? This person speaks to what I want mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. Then I am going to be your friend by force. <laughs> You're going to be my friend. I am going to make sure pursue you like me you. enough. I'm going to pursue <laughs> you because a lot of people think mentors are supposed to look for, for you. you. No. Yes. Run after mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. But you're the one who is in need Baby of Baby, you are around. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So look for this person. Mm. Call them. Mm. Check in on them. Yes. So those are the things that I have done for myself. Mm. And maybe you're some way too ambitious for my liking. Mm -hmm. It has <laughs> come at a cost. I'm looking at you. I'm like, <laughs> if I was like that 10 years ago, I don't know where I would be now. <laughs> Now I'm very too ambitious. Or 20 if years I want ago, in, I want in. I, I have so I've walked to a person, I tell them, I, I think even coming into Gliss, I walked in and I wanted to do work around civic education mm -hmm. and the national dialogue was running then. Yeah. I went to my boss and I told him I want in. Wow. That I want to be in the national dialogue. I wow. want. He's like, what can you come and do an internship? I was like, I'm glad to. Yes. Yeah. And it is that willingness to push, to push into spaces and to be able to say, I want in. Out competing this yourself. This is has a training and I'm like, I also want to be part of that training. Yes, it's going to benefit me. I will be of use and I find ways of being of, of use. use. Wow. So that is something I don't know if people have, but it's a discipline you learn as you go mm -hmm. that some spaces you're going to have to force yourself into. Mm. Some will open, mm -hmm. the doors will come, mm. but some you have to walk in and demand to be part of this conversation. Absolutely. Usually we say, you know, you know, the lion has no say if the hunter always is the one writing the script. Mm. If you're not on that table, mm -hmm. you're the one being mm -hmm. discussed. Mm -hmm. yeah. So choose to be on this table wow. and add to the conversation yes. that is happening at the table. Mm -hmm. And that is where I come from whenever I'm trying to advocate for spaces and push in spaces and... and and I've been rejected in some spaces. In some spaces, I'm, yes, absolutely. I show up again. Yes, yes. <laughs> you keep going back. So it's a, it's deliberate. It for is me. deliberate. Yes. And I think wow. from what I I yes. pick from that, mm. you know, women we are always laid back. Yeah, we are always laid back. I don't know if it is society. Or it is a something. societal issue, socialization. But when she's speaking and saying, mm. you know, want to be in, uh -huh. meaning you should be a go getter. You might, must be aggressive. Be, mm. Go in because. The world, unfortunately, is not for... And it's for the techies. It, you know, it's for the thick-skinned. No, yes. Yes. no one is going to look for mm -hmm. you. So you mm -hmm. need to mm -hmm. be able that I, ca I can do something. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. she puts it and says, I'll make myself relevant. Relevant. Yes. Make Impact that relevant. space. Yes. Let my presence Even be known that and you're only going to welcome people. Smile with... <laughs> And do it diligently. And, like, organize those yeah. files diligently. You know, yeah. do wow. it. Yeah. Ladies, you're raising a very important issue here. Mm. And I think if all women were working in such ways, 50% of Uganda's population, right? If we continue doing that, then we, we, we will dominate the spaces. We if will. every woman does whatever you are talking about in their space, I think yeah. then our countries, because they say when you unleash women's potential generally, yes. we impact the world better and uh, we, we achieve quite a lot. Yeah, and even the stereotypes that uh, you know, we, we see going around and saying women are unproductive, mm -hmm. it would stop. It would stop. It would stop, yeah. definitely. Because yeah. there is this discussion happening right now at political mm -hmm. level. They are saying we've concentrated on the girl child. <laughs> Come on, do something. The boy <laughs> child has been left behind. Do you think we have arrived to that point? positioning right now as a country that we should now let's go to mentor the young woman 
and focus on the boy child? Or is it an affront to, to our progress so far in terms of uh, women's emancipation? Because um, those affirmative seats, affirmative uh, policies at university, it is what has given us what we are talking about now. Mm -hmm. And there is a, a discussion right now, unfortunately, being fronted by our own women leaders in those spaces that, you know, we've focused on the boy child. We are not doing... Mm -hmm. What would be the conversation rather than what they are talking about? I think it's just look at uh, holistically mm. as a child. Mm -hmm. Both sexes. Look at them mm -hmm. holistically mm -hmm. as a child. Mm -hmm. But, you know, me, I am a person of equity. Equity. Equity is the equity. word. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not equality. Not equality. Mm. Uh -huh. Yes. For now. I because equality with... is the biggest goal. Yeah, yes. that's the biggest That is goal. what we aspire as the biggest, but uh, eventually. But equity. for now, it is equity. Because we are still talking of opportunities. Yeah. Mm. Equity. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, I know, you know, I, I, and I'm, I'm also a mother. <laughs> of boys and girls. <laughs> of boys and girls. Yes. God has been able to mm -hmm. bless me that mm -hmm. way. So I can see that in equity, I will look at these two children mm -hmm. holistically mm -hmm. and understand each of them. Mm -hmm. What are their needs? needs. Each of them. And what are their talents? And what are their talents? And yes. how do I develop support them? Support them mm. to develop yeah. them further. Wow. Yes. You have done so well in mm. the first uh, quarter. And uh, I think it's important for people to hear that from you to yeah. know what these leaders are made of. Yeah. Now, I would like to move to the issue of labor rights. We are building a conversation around that. For today, we may not very, go very far mm. because there are many issues. True. Labor rights, labor migration, yeah. issues of unpaid care. That is where my heart is. <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved to jump to I that know, unpaid your heart care is economy. So much that, that economy. Even the first time I met but you. Let's find that, uh, uh, that at least a starting ground yes. on these issues so everyone can be on the same page by the time we wind up with it. Mm. Generally, the issues of labor rights um, being from Platform for Labor Action. Yeah. When we are talking about labor rights, what are these? Wow, mm. uh, thank you so much. Now, labor that rights. is your passion now, so, yeah, so this is, <laughs> and it has become my passion. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. making a changes to the different workers mm. uh, that I have been privileged to mm -hmm. interact with, mm. privileged to impact. Mm. Uh, it has really become like you know, even my my masters went into that line the and everything line, because yes. it I've just come to enjoy the sector. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about labor rights. Ideally, uh, anyone who is out there, of course, we have different laws in this country Absolutely. that provide these right. labor rights. Ah. We will start with the constitution. Mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. know, everything starts from the that supreme law, yes. that constitution of the country. Yes. And when you look at Article 40, that is the, ah. you know, the, the, you know, the foundation of labor rights. And labor law in, in Uganda. Uganda. Yeah, mm. labor laws mm. and labor rights mm. and responsibility in Uganda. Mm. Of course, I would have gone, you know, at the international level mm. and how we come here and everything. But now that I'm speaking within this local context in Uganda, so we are looking at in the in the in, in Ugandan context, we start from that particular mm. article, which is on economic rights. Actually, when you're talking of the international legal framework, is yes. it which uh, declaration is that? It is in Article 23, I think. Yes, the, the Universal uh, Declaration the, yes, of, human, of rights. human Rights. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's where we see uh, labor rights uh, being pronounced, mm -hmm. and we've seen different sets, of course, going back into mm. their states mm. and contextualizing their setting mm. and coming up with different labor laws. laws yes. On that particular, so in Uganda, we start from that particular constitution, Article 40, and this, it basically covers the whole issues around economic rights. That wow. As any Ugandan, mm. you have a right to practice any profession mm. of your choice, mm. of your qualification mm. that mm. you would mm. want to. Mm. Any trade. Any trade. Yeah. That you would want to. Uh -huh. As long as it is legal. Wow. You know there are certain trades that are not legal. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? <laughs> like drug trafficking. Okay, that <laughs> one is there. <laughs> would, would not be, uh, would not be legal. Mm. Uh -huh. uh, arms dealing. Uh -huh. when, uh, unless you are a renowned uh -huh. and, uh, uh -huh. you know, a, a, a company that yes. deals in nuclear yes. and well known. Yes, but yes. if an individual, so those are the sort of like illegal, not allowed. Mm. But any other trade that mm. you would really want to do, mm. you are allowed to do. And also we see that it is in this particular article that we see the beginning of... Uh, of right to work in um yeah. in, 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 in in a clean 
satisfying environment, and environment. Ah. we see it's, it's where we're looking at the women workers uh-huh. the female employees uh-huh. having their affirmative the law yes. recognizing mm. the law recognizing the the, the the roles of women mm. yeah. in society mm. you mm. know mm. women have three roles mm. ideally hey. <laughs> <laughs> which one um, yeah. <laughs> at so, any given point we have three roles wow. at any given point uh-huh. The role of reproduction. Reproductive role. Yes. Mm-hmm. We have the role of production. Production. To work. The mainstream production. Yeah, working. Work. Yes. Like working. Uh-huh. And then we have the role of community. Aha. Uh-huh. Yes. Wow. We are playing all those roles. Yes. All those roles. And that's why they tell you women we mouth task. Yes. So we see that particular article introducing. So the men only have two. <laughs> they have production and, and community. Yeah. They don't have no, the production. Actually, they, they don't. No, they have production. And reproduction as well. They don't have community. Eh, but there has end somewhere. Yeah, it, it ends somewhere eh. because they contribute somewhere. Okay. Yeah, we don't go into those sci- the mm, science mm, aspect. Mm. <laughs> but uh, that one. So we also see the role of um, the, the right to associate workers coming together mm-hmm. and being in for trade common, unions. Yeah, in trade unions yes, and associations. Yes. That is where we are looking at this particular right oh. so we start from there wow and the right to be paid for equal pay, pay for in the same work, work. Done, okay in the same position ah. on all those things ah. Ah. so we start from there wow from the constitution we now we have different laws that have been made by uh, uh parliament, parliament of uganda yes. we have the employment act mm-hmm. of 2006 mm. now that one ends the different rights yes and for example we have the right to be paid because the right to when you, I go to work, when you work, work, you have to be paid. <laughs> work in terms of agreement. Yeah, mm. work mm. and you are paid. So mm. the right to be paid. I as must a have worker. a contract. Yeah, I yeah. must have the terms of contract. Yes, I must be given that contract as a worker. Yes, and uh, actually the law says uh, the employer shall give mm. written particulars, mm. you know, mm. of employment mm. to the worker. Okay. Yeah. So and 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 of course even the verbal. Uh, oral contracts are also recognized under mm-hmm. the law, mm. but of course it's better always to have um, a, written a written contract because it solves so many other issues. Yeah. Then we have rights like the right to annual leave oh. of 21 days, mm-hmm. at least in, in, in a calendar year, mm-hmm. yeah. but at least you should be able to go and rest. And these ones accrue to you like after every three uh, months. You get, you know, some, some days. rest. Yeah, mm. we expect you to go and rest. But yeah. you see, in the Ghanaian context, what happens that to people plan, yeah. they will want to go to the village and build. Yes. You need to, to go rest and, and rest. rest. Not to because, go and work. Not to go mm-hmm. and work because it was meant to refresh you. Okay. Yeah. It was meant to refresh you as a worker. Mm-hmm. So that you come back when you're sober. Because sometimes you are carrying a lot. A lot. Mm. And, and, and maybe to someone, it's very hard to separate this one individual from home issues. And work, and, work and work issues because it's one individual. Mm. Yeah. It's hard. No wonder we see the ILO Convention Number One Ninety. Mm. Uh, that convention was passed at the at the International Conference, okay. uh, where Uganda is also a member. Mm. And this particular convention is talking about violence and harassment in the world of work, ah. and it's calling upon employers that please take cognizance of the fact that domestic issues. Are still alive to this to worker this work. because it's one individual carrying the load. He's carrying the load. We can't separate them. <laughs> so as you're them. talking, I'm actually <laughs> reflecting on a woman who is being harassed at home, uh-huh. experiencing violence, violence, and then she has to come and to, work. To work. Or a man, and then you expect, who is also experiencing uh-huh, that and then you kind expect of her If let me say, if she's a friendless person, to smile early in the morning. Mm. Hello, you're most welcome. But you see, she's facing challenge. So she's telling you, the employer, recognize it. That if she says, I just need two hours just to sober, recognize that indeed you need it. So that you allow her to go. Wow. Or you allow him to go, yeah. you know, at any given point. So we also have the right, of course, the right to maternity leave. That, that particular one. right. We have tested I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> All over. All over. <laughs> the right to maternity leave. We actually of wanted it expanded. working day. A. Paid for. We wanted it expanded in the last proposals we brought to Parliament. Yes. We wanted uh, houses, babies, okay, corners, and breastfeeding corners yes. for at, at workplaces, so mm. that after the six, mm. what is it, three months? Yeah, yeah, six working, uh, six working days would be about three months. Yes, after mm. the three months, mm. you carry your baby mm-hmm. with your bottles. Yes. And breastfeed in that corner. so that your mind is at peace. True. Yes, those kind of things. There yeah. were other things we wanted because of time. We will not go into that. True. Because I want you to go into other areas. Yes. Yes, please. Yeah, so, so that particular right, 
and you see <laughs> employers sometimes they amuse us yeah, and you find that in corporate world, in corporate world by the way even in banks i know banks of where people hard. say you have to go only for two, two months. months 60 days they have counted for you others for you you work seven days a week mm. Mm -hmm. and yet when you're counting the 60 working days mm. we only count the days that you are, are supposed, supposed to be, to be working. Work. Yes. We don't include public the weekends. Days. Mm -hmm. We don't include weekends. Uh -huh. So if a person works six days, mm -hmm. ordinarily, mm. let's imagine I wasn't pregnant, I work six days a week. Yeah. Meaning, when you're counting my maternity leave, you count also count six days. days. If I work five days a week, you count five days a week. But we see people too. And if some people tell you now, and you know, like when she was talking about, you know, uh, technology and everything, mm. now we are seeing. Uh, W working from home. Eh? Working from home. You're still on maternity leave. But you're working. You have and then work. they tell you, you know, you see, you can the deliver. You home. can deliver. <laughs> oh <laughs> my God. I don't know how that would be like. Yeah. So yeah. It, Because it, even just the, 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 the new years of a child are so hectic and demanding. Very. Then you have to add the working and all that. Yeah. I don't know when we will reach the level of other Nordic countries. Like they take a whole year of rest. Mm -hmm. Yes, a whole year. And can I, can I make you something? Uh, we, uh, when the, um, the parliament, the tenth parliament was debating the employment, the employment amendment. amendment bill, yes, uh, we had uh, we came up with a proposal. That even the person, a woman who has adopted a child, mm -hmm. needs to have that yes. that leave to yes. bond mm -hmm. to what and, and all baby. those things. Oh my goodness, you would have. You would have been in that room you to hear the question that came that through. Coming you through. want to make our women lazy? Uh -huh. That is number one. Uh. Stop borrowing, borrowing laws. And Foreign laws. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they will tell you. And I say, okay, okay. It's, a, it's a maternity right. It's, it's a maternity a, right. Yeah, it is a, it's an that, international yeah. right. And it yeah. Is, yeah. The right to rest during mm. working hours. But are you seeing work employers affecting these rights? Yeah. Because what you're talking about are the rights of the employees. Yes. But what about the employers? Don't they have uh, rights that are, are in, uh, protected, rather, by the law? As, as employers? Yes. They also have rights. They mm -hmm. have rights. Because, oh. For example, they have the right to hire and fire. <laughs> to do the right procedures. <laughs> okay. Let's talk of obligations, perhaps. <laughs> yes. Maybe they, are, they speak more to yeah. the question. Yeah. Now, now, for them, in terms of obligation, mm. every right of a work is an obligation of that. Of, of the, the employer. employer. Yes, of the employer. Of the employer. Every right that I have is the obligation. But there are some of those rights that maybe I can quick that those obligations I can quickly highlight for yes. for for the employers. Mm. The obligation to provide work. Ah. Yes. So I've come to office and then I am sitting around you and I don't <laughs> Now you see, I can even come to office. So if you have not given me work. You can't say at the end of the day, I can't pay you. Mm -hmm. Unless I am on a, I'm a, on a casual basis. Mm -hmm. But if it's mm -hmm. not casual, mm -hmm. I report to work and you don't give me work. At the end of the month, you should pay me. Because okay. it's your obligation mm -hmm. to have given me work. Mm -hmm. That is one. Mm -hmm. The other one, to provide working tools. Mm -hmm. And you see, you're seeing it in this era of where you are going dicto. Okay. So you're telling people work from home. But I don't have you have told them I don't have I don't for have them to work from home? I don't have internet. I don't internet, have internet. Uh, laptop, and all, all those things. Mm. Have you told this worker to work from home, to mm. deliver from mm. home? Mm. Because mm. it's your right to give me working mm. tools. Mm. Am mm. I able to deliver? Yes, yes. That is, that, that, that is the other obligation. Mm. The other obligation, of course, is also uh, in terms of um, creating an enabling environment mm. that enables me to work. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. The workplace should be able to be fit to be a workplace. Oh. For example, are there toilets? Are there washrooms? Uh, you know, um, I, uh, you know, my health, all those things. It's the obligation mm, of, the, of the place of the employer mm, to ensure that where mm. I'm working, it's really satisfactory. Sanitary and corners, yeah, corners, yeah. and all those things for changing. Then we have the we other... need breastfeeding corners as true, well. True, true, mm. true. And yeah. uh, we have seen some employers who have now become very progressive, mm -hmm. coming up. Mm. Parliament is one of them. <laughs> 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 Never went there even. Maybe some gender there. now. <laughs> <laughs> With my little one. Yeah, Minister yeah. of Gender now has also put up um, um, a, a child care center. Mm -hmm. um, so you're seeing, you know, those baby steps being Coming taken up, on. Yeah. There are also some companies, I think now breweries. Mm -hmm. Now breweries has been, uh, I think, uh, uh, is giving now six, six months, months. Mm. maternity leave. Yeah. Mm. You know, that is a very good thing at the end of the day. So mm. companies but, should aspire to be best employers. Yeah, best employers. Really? At the, where at everybody the aspires to work. Let and, me tell you. Yes. When you deal with the issues of workers, the productivity from that workforce, ah. oh my goodness, you don't want to, to wow. make. Once the worker mind is settled, 
they would output is good the output is good mm -hmm. it even goes to payment mm -hmm. you know as we come to that particular mm -hmm. aspect mm -hmm. so the other uh, obligation that we have the employer mm -hmm. is to ensure mm -hmm. ensure it's the word is ensure ensure them. yeah ensuring the workers mm -hmm. for any liabilities that may come forth does that mean also the nssf issues come in there Oh yeah, mm. uh, that one is is sort of like is that one social security, but also of course they have an obligation to remit mm -hmm. the NSSF mm. on behalf of these particular mm. workers because mm. it's the right of the worker wow. for, for you know for them to be able to save mm -hmm. you know for different aspects of social shocks of life here. Yes. Mm. So ensuring your workers as an employer, they're telling you in case for anything example, happened, your workers get injured in the course of employment, oh. they should be able to access medication. Wow. They should be able to be compensated mm -hmm. in case that injury or that disease has injured or left them permanently incapacitated. Okay. So all those are obligations mm -hmm. of, the, mm -hmm. uh, of, of, of the employer to ensure that this particular worker is actually protected at any given point in time. I think you've done very well in mm. giving us that highlight. But I'm thinking now, yes, all those rights and obligations. So supposing there's a problem, where do I run to? Oh, yeah. What what happens? Is there a remedy for a worker? I'm sure <laughs> Gloria, <laughs> Gloria is listening in. She's a worker yes. and uh, many other workers. Yes. Isn't yes. that question running in your mind right now? Well, uh, I've been radical before to push for... <laughs> I wasn't pregnant, I know. but I knew pregnant women, two or three of them in, a, in, in an organization I was working for, and it was healthcare, mm -hmm. and yet they were only obligated to two months. One paid mm -hmm. for maternity leave, one paid, and, and one unpaid. You take it, but it won't be paid. No. I was like, no, 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 no. no. not on my watch. No. And so we pushed and advocated for the fact that they can actually get fully paid mm -hmm. maternity leave as per the laws of Uganda. Yeah. And so it was a back and forth. So what I did, the radical me then, I was such an activist and dying to cause change. So I wrote to Ministry of Gender and Social Development. And there was a response. They, they showed us that they had received it. We copied in the, the human resource at that healthcare center where I was. And the conversation began. But I can, I can gladly say the ladies got their three months paid. Yes, that was a win for me. That was a win for me. Wow. And to this day, I, when I look back on the very other times that they've been able to, you know, show up for work and yeah. they go for their maternity leave and then still find their jobs there, mm -hmm. it's a win for every other woman every that other will woman come into that out. space. Absolutely. Because now you've created a narrative that mm -hmm. they can run a with. Yes, borrow. so when you speak to where can you go, mm -hmm. I was privileged to know the law. Not everyone I'm does. Lawyer, no, I am not. But law is not a preserve for lawyers. Yes, no. but I was curious enough to teach myself ar around the issues to deal with the labor law and mm -hmm. every other thing. What did I need to know in what the moment? What do I need to know as an employed person? Mm -hmm. I need this. I need this is part of what they bring that, that is brought to the table by my employer. And these are my also my, my responsibilities as an employee. Yes. So from that grain, I also had access to some lawyers that mm -hmm. could give me advice of do this, you can do this. Yes, you're within the law when you do this. Mm -hmm. No, you're out of the law when you do that. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can send a request to sue, mm -hmm. a notice to sue, mm -hmm. even before you sue. Mm -hmm. So I knew what to do with the, with, 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 with the knowledge that I had. Okay. That's a kind of awareness made not before everyone. For everyone. So, so I'm aware of that. Mm -hmm. So... That, that is just me in the moment, an exception to the rule, but it should be the rule mm. that we educate ourselves know. around the politics, around the law, mm -hmm. around labor rights, around what responsibilities do we have as, as people. Absolutely. And how do we also enforce ourselves to be able to, you know, have working environments that speak mm. to our rights True. and also the obligations of our employers. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You've got me thinking about something. There are people who are having workers working. One, two, three, four months, they are not paid. What happens to such a person? But you are supposed to have a contract. You don't even have a contract, but you're working on a daily basis without a pay. Because we are talking about the remedies. Mm. Where can somebody go for such? And so, what, what must happen in such uh, instances? Maybe let me just uh, start. Uh, where can we go for remedies in mm. case such things happen? Yeah. I like what Tracy uh, what says that, you know, you need, first of all, you need to know your rights. Know your rights. Mm. You need also to educate yourself have the thirst to learn more and more all the time. Mm -hmm. add, like I said, add something. 
yeah. some knowledge on yourself. Some knowledge mm. on yourself. Because then someone will not take you for a ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But in case anyone is violated, who anyone's right is violated at the workplace, we have the people whom we refer to as the labor officers. Now, yeah. every district is a must. Trisha, do you know that many people don't have this information yeah. they are sharing True. right now? Yeah. They don't. Where is the labor officer found? Even people <laughs> that... <laughs> And not even people, people even in the corporate world yes. and the educated they do not know. Yes. But every district has a labor officer. Mm-hmm. Every district. Mm. You just go to the district office and say the labor office mm. and they will able be able to show you. Oh. You'll be in shock. But oh. and it's there. Oh. Of course the challenges are many. That's mm-hmm. the topic I think for another day. Yes. Why okay. they are not so much known uh-huh. and very active and mm. effective mm. as we, they expect them. Mm. Now that particular labor office is actually what we call a quasi judicial court. Ah, what is that? <laughs> it is it's like a court of itself because it is a starting point in any labor related issue. issue. Okay. In fact, you cannot go to the industrial court mm-hmm. unless you have passed through the, the labor, labor office. office. Hey, it is that restrictive. That's why the industrial court we call it is a, a court of reference that mm-hmm. unless you have failed here, mm-hmm. that's when you should you go. Should go oh, that's when you should be sent. Mm-hmm. You understand? To court. To, co- to the other court mm-hmm. now. Industrial court yeah, now. Yeah, industrial court. Mm-hmm. But the labor office. In Kampala here, mm-hmm. every division has, has a labor, an, a labor, a labor officer. officer. Yes. In Wakiso now, every municipality has, has a, a labor, labor officer. officer. Mm-hmm. So, now, where there are cities, mm-hmm. so, in uh, where now we have different cities as a country. Mm-hmm. So, in, in the city, you have uh, a labor officer for the district, then you have the city labor, labor officers. officers. Wow. So they are there. This Even in so municipalities, great. they are there. <laughs> so if you have any challenge out there, go to that office mm. is the starting point. Yes, yes. Of course, in that office, there are many things that happen. In that office, they can mediate. They can, you know, help you to sit and talk mm. about issues. They can also arbitrate. Mm. Arbitrate is like Sort of like a court, a court sitting, mm-hmm. yeah? resolution. Yeah, a court resolution. Yeah. You, you discuss sit, and negotiate. Present your case. Present, present your yours. case. Now, this person who is in, in that particular arbitrating, ob- arbitrating will make the judgment. judgment. Yes. And if you don't agree with, that's when maybe you go to that industrial court. Wow. So we have the industrial court of Uganda, mm-hmm. and that that court uh, is now at the level of the high court. Wow. So when you go there, you're able to access. And the beauty is, um, before it used to sit. You know the the the, the chief the, the chief judge and then the judge now they have sep- the, they are, they have separated them they are sit- they are having more sitting so yeah. wow. that is one of the ways you can resolve now if you're a member of a labor union mm-hmm. okay if you're a member of a labor union what is your starting point your starting point is to go to your labor union, union. you understand offices yeah offices mm-hmm. or representative at the workplace where you are working. So at this, try to handle this issue. Mm-hmm. And if the labor union uh, fails, then you go to the labor Supposing office. Supposing I don't have, I don't belong to a labor union. Then for you, oh. you go straight. So and if I have an interest, office. okay, that is a discussion for another day that yes. people who are not in labor union, yes. why must they organize and have those labor unions? And what is the process even of creating oh, oh, a labor union? union? I think it's a whole it's a big very, It's thing. a very big thing, but I can quickly just say, why yes. should you organize? Mm. Why is it important for you to belong? Mm. You know, all of us, we belong somewhere. Yeah. Even in the community, you, mm. belo- you belong to some the sort of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm proud to be associated the women with. For collective bargaining yeah, for and bargaining negotiation and all those things. And talk. You have yeah. one voice mm-hmm. on an issue. Mm-hmm. No one mm-hmm. will pick on you. Mm-hmm. We've seen teachers when they come out to strike. We've seen medical people when they come ah, out to strike. You will they, Yeah, we see... <laughs> <laughs> yes. We saw them. They will not pick out Lydia. Say, mm, it is Lydia. No. Mm-hmm. Because you are in a group. Collective. It's collective. The doctors are, are four, threatening to, uh-huh. to strike actually. Yeah. Two weeks time. And therefore, mm-hmm. you'll be protected. Mm-hmm. There's job security. Mm-hmm. Even yeah. when you go on strike at mm-hmm. the workplace, we're under a labor union. Mm-hmm. The yes, employer yes. is man, cannot terminate your contract because you, you, you strike. But now you do it when you are alone. alone. Yes. <laughs> My friend. <laughs> no the forces that be. So that is the beauty of belonging. Wow. And associating wow. and unionizing ideally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that in that particular angle. Wow. What should someone do who has been a casual laborer mm-hmm. and there is no contract? Mm-hmm. They are continuing. You know, there's a lot of casualization of labor in this right country. Right now, yeah. and it is you know, deliberate. Professionals are being casualized. That yeah. is deliberate. People forgot that actually the word casual, mm-hmm. it was not for professionals it to wasn't. be casualized. Mm-hmm. It was for the non-skilled labor. Labor. Mm-hmm. That you know, Today I'm working here, yeah, I'm working here, yeah, I'm working here. Mm. Yeah. 
but we have seen even casual teachers now. Yeah. Our one is a casual teacher. Mm, mm, mm. Casual uh, primary, generalist. especially primary. Yeah. to argue yeah. bank on that mm -hmm. because it then speaks to the to the politics around our work environment. Mm -hmm. um, with with lack of uh, minimum wage, wage care, yes. With lack of you know working regulatory frameworks, mm -hmm. we find ourselves in a space where manipulations takes a day. Mm -hmm. So you have workers that are disgruntled, but they need the job. Mm -hmm. So they won't have, I will show up at that factory with less pay, mm -hmm. ending the day with maybe 5,000 each day. But I have no right to even complain because I need it. this you job. You need it. So with it's the, about with, survival. With, yeah, with mm -hmm. the, you have graduates coming out of universities every year. And while some go into entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. very many are looking for jobs. Mm. So in a job market that is very small, mm -hmm. there is very much room for manipulation of the rules mm. that take that day. Mm. So you find yourself that even in a bad or toxic work environment, you would choose Keep to pushing stay there. Because mm. you have a job to wake up to. Mm. Mm. Do I have money? No, but I have a job to wake up to. Mm -hmm. And that is a, the reality that we are living in as, sure. as, as, as a country. Mm. With the reality of the pandemic a lot of people were laid off but i know very many people that were just even glad to take a pay cut wow it's like i'd rather take a pay cut but keep my job yeah. than be laid off mm. so that's a because the, the, there are so many bills to exactly. make exactly yeah. so that's a politics around us so while we would want known to casualize our our our, our the professionals mm. and make sure professionals are professionals and casual laborers are casual, casual laborers, laborers we find ourselves in a time where it's a man eat man wow. survival for the fittest mm. this is bad i either show up mm -hmm. and work Oh. Or someone is going to take my job. Mm -hmm. and like, w w like they tell you, if you can't take it, a hundred are get waiting. Out. <laughs> like, <Just> please get <laughs> out. Bless you. you know? Your job is bad. Get out. I want it. <laughs> so you what does everything. that speak uh, you, Lydia, as the expert in the area? Is there a better inspection right now and, you know, monitoring and, you know, supervision? Do we see government doing a lot of that? <laughs> I'm looking on the other side. <laughs> I don't know, I'm smiling when yeah. you ask about labor inspection. Mm -hmm. And you know, when I say that, you know, uh, it will be another topic for another day why yes. the labor officers mm. are actually not effectively delivering. Mm -hmm. Because even inspection is one of their responsibilities, mm -hmm. ideally, to inspect workplaces and ensure that mm -hmm. workers' rights and, you know, they are being observed and everything. Mm -hmm. But you see, let me give you an example. They appoint a labor officer at the district level, mm -hmm. but he's not facilitated. In, mm. in the, even in the district budget, mm. The, that office has no code, mm. like a budget line eh? wow. for that particular office. So they come and report. Those are challenges you're pointing out so that we might inspect. want to handle in our next I can even program. tell you that mm. even in the labor inspection mm -hmm. of uh, department that we have in the Ministry of Gender, mm. I think about over, they estimate that it was then that we have over one, one million workplaces, yeah. but only 3,000 3, had been. Uh, inspected. inspected. Mm -hmm. So you wonder. It means that the remaining ninety something, ninety seven percent something, Ooh. are actually not, not certified workplaces yeah. that they are fit for people to, to work, work in. in. Okay. That is the reality. And like she has alluded to the challenges, the changes of unemployment, Monica, are true. Oh yes. And we have seen these challenges actually pushing many of our young people even going into labor migration. Yeah. I would like actually like to pick your mind yeah. on that. As we have this conversation, Gloria, you are the researcher around the region, <laughs> <laughs> my expert <laughs> in the region, yeah. Great yeah. Lakes region. Mm. How are you seeing this conversation? There is um, this whole discussion maybe if uh, labor was crossing the borders. Yeah, oh, like you know, yeah. So, so maybe, maybe it can address um, the unemployment issue here. Lydia will have the, the technical terms for it. Mm. I'll speak to it in, in a layman conversation. Mm. As the South African integration, we have that now that we have the market. We would hope that then the border the one current for Ugandans to cross into Rwanda and work, mm, for Kenyans mm. to cross into Uganda and work. Mm -hmm. But such a reality is left on paper. Mm -hmm. So you find yourselves in a time when even for industrialization, we, we will push for Uganda by Bubu. 
then Kenya will also push, push for, for buy Kenya. Own buy Kenya. Then Rwanda will push for buy Rwanda. Uh -huh. And so in such a reality, you even find even in the employment sector. schemes and in the employment mm. sector, mm. Mm. it is very hard to, to, to assimilate, you know, different East Africans into the, the East African region. Mm. Mm. But mm. I'm, I'm particular to believe that also the challenges that are in Kenya in their labor rights and in their labor environment uh, may yeah. not be different from what we are facing mm. in Uganda. Mm. And that is where we have an advent of a lot of, of externalization of labor. Mm -hmm. So then you have that, because you will find a documentary that speaks to a Kenyan, mm -hmm. that speaks to a Ugandan, the same. that speaks to the issues that they are suffering mm. when they are, you know, when they are migrated into different Arab countries mm -hmm. to work. Mm -hmm. And not necessarily speaking for for bad in Arab areas, but that is, you know, the politics that we've seen. Now that had. is the trend. Wow. A trend. Where, where, most where, uh, people are going. go to Jordan, wow. people will go to Dubai, people will go to Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia. So, so that's a narrative. Mm. But it speaks to what they're leaving behind. Mm. If I have not found a job in Rwanda, Kenya and Tanzania and mm -hmm. Uganda and Sudan, mm -hmm. or even within the Great Lakes region, and I am opting that there is someone giving me 800,000 to be, you know, migrated into Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. It speaks to a, a reality that you're leaving behind. Mm. Maybe most probably lack of opportunities, mm -hmm. uh, a closed space to quality of life. Uh -huh. you know I mean, if I'm going to improve my quality of life, I mean, I, I need to well look for opportunities. Yeah. Yes, I need yeah. to cut and work. Mm. And not necessarily that they get a better life there, but that they're escaping something from, from here. Yeah. So while we have the East African region, we have failed to assimilate even in our work environment, mm. even in our politics. Mm. Mm. It's, it's mm. almost like we have a, a shell of something that we are working towards, but we are all working individually. Wow. So we may never achieve it in its reality. Even in integration, the key would be that I would be able to travel to um, within Africa or within the East African region with, a require, with, with requiring so much only but my ID. But you still need your passport sometimes. Yes. You, still, you still need to get your tickets. You still need to get your visas. So it, 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 it's a whole chain of things that need to be able to be shifted. So that of course, Labour as a young move. leader, I mm -hmm. think those are issues that you want to say perhaps there are some more work to be done. Sure. Because I know of colleagues who are in South Sudan, mm. in Rwanda working, some have gone into Congo, yeah. in Kenya here. Yeah. So I think there are is there is a lot of intermingling even without the law which is effective yeah. or without you know those policies you're talking about I, I think maybe you could speak to that and True. There what is a lot more of can we do because i know ugandans that are in rwanda yeah. kenyans that are in uganda yeah. and, and kenyans who are here uganda, in uganda they are actually studying and mm. they are going on with life and they're actually even working mm. Mm. but that is the reality of any other country mm -hmm. that they'll be foreigners <laughs> <laughs> My worry is that we've had a trend in, in, in Africa, I'll speak to the African region, where we, we are more xenophobic. Ah, so again, it's the fellow African, exactly. actually. Pero. So, Pero. Yeah. Uh, Nigerian who can't put up a shop and I'll ban it because, I mean, you know, you think he's a foreigner. foreigner. What is he why are you doing here? in uh -huh. this country? Uh -huh. I mean, you're Ugandan. Why are you prospering in Sudan? What? Mm -hmm. And so they keep saying, do you, Sudan is a war area. Don't go. Please stay home. You don't need that money. Mm. And so those are the realities in our labor environment that we need to be keen to. That while we have this space that we are saying we can enter mm. in, mm. we need to address the challenges and the issues that come with such a space, mm. but then also to address the challenges home on issues of employment, uh, minimum wage, minimum wage issues. and, you know, legislation, protection, protection of, of workers and yes, their rights. The workers and wow. their rights. Yeah. I think we are running out of time, but uh, before we go, Lydia, mm. there is this whole conversation of slavery now. You had uh, tried to open slavery. our minds in there. Mm -hmm. Right now we are um, making 400 years since our first slave left the continent. <laughs> Can you imagine? It's 400 years ago. <laughs> But uh, 400 years down the road, we are now seeing, at that time, people were willing. Yes. No, I mean, the they were conscripted yes. Yes. into slavery and mm. going to foreign land. Mm. Yeah. But now we are going on our own. Yes. You willingly subject yourself to go there because you have no other alternative. Okay. We just wanted to pick your thoughts on that <laughs> and uh, what needs to be done oh, right now. It's a whole discussion. We shall build on it in true. our next shows, I very think. Very true, very mm. true. Because already Tracy has sort of like kick-started that yes, process. that whole discussion. And the reasons why people are being forced to be able to move on their own mm. voluntarily. Mm. Like the little pay. I have interacted with teachers, mm -hmm. going to work as domestic workers. Can you imagine? I have interacted Professionals. with them. Professionals. Professional teacher. Mm. But why? Because where they are going, they are going to be paid 800. A little bit. 
50,000 mm. and in Uganda a teacher is paid 300 300 mm. and 600 mm. 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 so that extra one is just forcing someone and it's to also go. not sure now with covid exactly when yes so what we are terming as like sort of like modern day slavery mm -hmm. where you somehow go but like she said the things happening where you are forcing you to what to move to go mm. it is one of those things mm. and yet our policies when you look at them they are not they're not yet capacitated enough to be able to protect me the Lydia who is going to Saudi Arabia ah. to work as a domestic worker don't we have externalization so we need a robust, laws, eh? laws around oh, externalization we have, um, really we have the it was actually reviewed recently ah. the regulation on yeah. um, migrant workers mm -hmm. it was reviewed mm. 20 uh, 2020 mm. so it is a new and re 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 reviewed we is participated it going to address in the review. that gap you're raising yeah, protection of workers abroad, abroad. abroad. Mm. is it going to address it my answer is a yes and no mm -hmm. in terms of policy and being able to get uh, or, or, or putting an obligation on the person who is taking Lydia yes it will be able to address because mm. it has re really tried to put into framework measures mm. and framework yeah. within this person who is operating in Uganda you're taking people to work abroad yeah. but you see as long as we are the, the countries of destination, we don't speak the same language. Mm. Yeah. I'm sorry to say, but you see, uh, at the you international level, it, yes. we have certain conventions mm -hmm. or laws to ask someone who's watching us, laws that bring countries together. Yeah. Mm. Now, if a country has not agreed and signed on yeah. a certain ah, international yeah. law uh -huh. that yeah. brings other countries together. They are not obligated. But for you, mm. you are taking their, your citizens in such a country. They are, they are not obligated. They are not under any obligation mm. for you to hold them accountable and mm. perhaps for you to force them, please, you must follow this law. Mm. Yeah. No, mm. they are not under that obligation. Mm. Mm. So, how do we get there? We need sort of like, I, I'll, call, I'll call it like, a, a, a pronged approach. Multi pronged approach. Yes, a multi pronged Back approach. Back home here, but also Back home, the other side. At international level mm -hmm. to level the ground. Mm -hmm. Because let mm -hmm. me give you an example. If you are preparing someone to go and work as a domestic worker in someone's home, who is preparing the employer at the other side to receive, to this, receive person this worker and look at this person as, as a, a human as being? A human being and as a worker. Fit mm -hmm. to work? No, you understand? Mm -hmm. So those are very key. So we need a robust monitoring system mm. that monitors all the four stages of migration mm. Mm. the 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 the, the, the pre-migration stage uh -huh. the migration stage mm. the arrival stage mm -hmm. and the return stage return yeah. stage they must be robustly monitored and yeah. that's a whole big area it's a very big area which is For not example, regulated how are people living you know mm -hmm. there are those yeah. who are going through companies registered and there are those who are going through other, other channels, channels. Other channels. Yeah. and those are the most dangerous ones mm. because those who go to the camp and register, it's easier for them to go to the camp and say, and hey, sure. what you happened? took this person, mm -hmm. where is this person? person? For two years, how, yeah. how, how, how come they don't get back? Wow. But now, these ones who go through other channels, it's a big challenge. A big so we challenge. need to monitor, first as a country, the, the, the pre-migration. Do people have the right information mm -hmm. about labor migration? Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's a good program. Mm. It's a program, you see, in the employment uh, policy. Uh, we write and say it's a temporary measure of coming and employment. <laughs> but look, it's not temporary. Yes. It is here with us. It is here with us. Mm, yes. Because mm. like she said, every year we have graduates. Leave around the graduates. There are those who drop out. Who drop out. You know when you look at the rate of enrollment and the completion? Mm -hmm. you, people keep on dropping out. Yes. But they also reach the age of working age. Mm. And they need to and work. They need to work. work. Mm. And they so need to work. Which economy? Yeah. And actually from the information I have from people working mm. out there, they say that those who are coming from Uganda, yes. they go for the normal you know, jobs. Yes. But there are people who come from other parts of the country and they have the other curriculum. The British, you yes. know, the Cambridge and yes. all that. Yes. And that really mm. offers them opportunities which are yes. better there. So and, and you're dealing with home course, issues, but and also... And yeah. and so it means mm. as a country, preparing from the, 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 the robust monitoring system, mm. we also need to be able to bargain or to skill for the global market. market. That is the, the point. Skill sure. for the global market. Uh -huh. mm. So that you take skilled people people as out opposed there to taking and they can do better jobs and skilled yeah. and unskilled people. And, you t and, and even we will, be, we will be able to stop taking people in very high risk sectors. Wow. For example, the domestic work sector is one of the high, high risk, risk sectors, sectors in the world, wow. not even in the country. Wow. So because wow. what happens behind in the houses, houses you cannot tell. You people. can't tell. Yeah. So we need to be able to skill for the global market wow. as a country. Wow. So that way you are minimizing the risks mm -hmm. that your citizens will be able to. But the other component mm. also, mm. Uganda, we are living in a global 
village. And, and we are also living in the region. Yes. Okay? Yes. Uh, you know, the Great Lake mm -hmm. region or the East African, East African region, region. Even IGAD is mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And all that. Are we able to have a block negotiation for such with terms. the destination regions? Ah, this but is I where think even, even to yeah. maybe to come in there, yeah. more mm. than just even, you know, produce for the global market. Mm. Can we have a way where we create job creators, mm -hmm. innovators, <laughs> invest in, you know, in, in innovation hub, uh -huh. uh, create in the creatives in the The wealth creators of yes, Uganda. So and yeah, we are not, you know, creating job seekers that are going to be taken away. And yeah. we've shaped our bull. Mm. We are giving it on market yes. days. Oh. But rather we create people mm. that can actually build Uganda. Uganda. For true. Uganda. So yes. that its citizens can enjoy the country. Let Very people true. come here yeah, and we sure. employ them. As well and for as example, for me, let me yeah. tell you, mm. I quickly, and I agree with you totally. I, when I look at, and I mean, this is a different discussion, maybe. Wow. All of us have different opinion on it. Wow. But just wow. imagine wow. that if we had innovators mm. or entrepreneurship, mm. young people, mm. Mm. and these are the people who are receiving this money, the YLP money. YLP money, to create, the to parish increase, model money, to, to create increase, jobs. Increase, to increase on, on, on whatever they have done and then they create jobs for others wow. and they are within. Mm. But for us to imagine that every person will open up a business. Yeah. <laughs> this is a very important discussion, ladies, <laughs> that we have engaged in issues of labor rights, labor migration, the unpaid care. I, I think you have not even done Touch, a, touched the detail yeah. no. of it, especially yes. the unpaid care mm. uh, yeah. economy in Uganda. Yes. I think mm. we shall revert to that discussion another day. Sure. But you have done me well and our viewers, I think you have ably at least um, engaged the viewer on the issue of labor rights and the attendant yeah. issues. And I'm sure what you're discussing here is similar to what is happening in the other countries as well, yeah. because you're talking of a very important issue, labor negotiations. Yeah. As, as much as we negotiate other issues, even mm. this issue of negotiation of labor yeah. employment yeah. issues in, is important mm. in the region yeah. around us and at an international yeah, uh, okay. level. So mm. I think we shall revert to that conversation again, Lydia, in our <laughs> next uh, uh, discussion. This has been very engaging and very, very um, informative. I'm sure our viewer has enjoyed this. But in our next program, we shall be bringing in more experts to deal with this issue. But sure. our experts on this show are women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I could say high five there, you know, yeah. because people think women don't have knowledge. Mm -hmm. All that discussion we had that women don't want to go to the media because they are not well read. They don't know things. They, mm. I think we are discounting that. Yes. The women that are coming on this show, we want to showcase to the world that there are many. Mm. I want to share There something. are very many women yeah. who are out there, knowledgeable, know their topic, know their issues, and they are impacting their world. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, very grateful today we've been able to do that on this particular area. Thank you, Lydia. As a leader, you have done me well. I pray that God promotes you more. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> in the near, I, I don't know, That's 10 me. years from now, where do you see yourself? Even uh, 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 Tricia. Wow. <laughs> Is it parliament? Should I be expecting a workers MP? Uh, no. Not yet. No, I, 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 I believe I will make a difference differently. Not in this, as, um, not outside. Yeah, no. yeah mm. outside in social, mm, okay. Yeah. Mm. Social justice uh, yeah. campaigns and all that. Mm. Okay, thank you so much. You're doing your work even here. Yes. I've been very, very honored to host you. Uh, Tricia, this one I know will come back here we are inspiring young leaders like her Thank to you. do more i think with your work with your story this one is an ed in the future or maybe uh a, a professor a professor yeah. wow I was going to say academia. <laughs> a professor in the academia <laughs> teaching others so thank yeah. you so much ladies thank you our viewer for being with us up to this time we have to sign off from here our time and we're also mindful of your MBs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, the conversation was getting heated and more interesting, yes. but we have to cut it short mm. here. I know you'll join us in our next conversation. Thank you for being with us here today. I want to appreciate you so much for your time and, of course, our guests. It Thank is not easy to get guests here, yeah. but um, you have been a blessing to me and the viewers. Mm. Thank you so much, uh, Hotel uh, Arch Apartments, Apartments in Intinda. This is a place which is very quiet, very good. For your retreats meetings and other things they have been very kind to us to be here in their ground but mm. also we want to tell you it's a very good place uh, for those who love to meditate reflect and think and do work in the quiet mm -hmm. this is the place to be i'd like to thank our dear partners our center for constitutional governance you are our 
you know, our heroes <laughs> because you keep us here engaging. Thank you so much, mm. team at CCG. Thank you so much, team at Greece. You are keeping us thinking, thinking about issues affecting our region yeah. and providing alternatives. Yeah. This discussion is thinking about the wider community in the mm. Greater Lakes region mm. and we are thinking around solutions which can take us forward in the next years as leaders mm. because each of us here is a leader in our various capacities. So we want to sign off and to thank you so much. Civic Space TV, you are our darling. You're growing bigger and bigger and better. Thank you for giving us this space as women leaders to talk, to engage, to engage the public. Yes, my name is Monica and we want to sign out from here. Until we meet next time, shalom. Mm -hmm.